26th edition of the Feetman Zeddy Show. My, my guest this, ev this evening is State Senator, State Senator, he tries to say, Paul Formica. Senator Formica, welcome. Good. Thank you so much. How thank are you, you sir? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Good. Thank you. Couldn't be better. Thank you. Now, tell me, who is Paul Formica? Who is Paul Formica? Well, um, I am a father of four. Okay. I have uh, four great kids. All right. Uh, two of which uh, are out of the state. One is uh, 27 in New York City. My son is 30 in L.A. All right. Uh, my two young, uh, youngest daughters, 23 and 25, are working at the family business. All righty. Uh, my wife and I started the family business in 1983. Wow. Took a small single family home and uh, created a small fish market. And it's turned into a... Uh, uh, a, a small business 32 years later that includes restaurant, catering, fish market. Uh, so we do that, and uh, so my kids are taken over. Uh, I've been an elected official mm -hmm. for uh, 23 years in the town of East Lyme. I'm wow. 12 weeks into my new state senator there role. There you and go. I grow roses at my house and <laughs> like to dance. There you go. There so you, how's that? There you go. I like That's it. That's the quick one. <laughs> exactly. Now, how are things going up at the Capitol? Well, listen, I think they're going great. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity, uh, you know, to be able to go up there each and every day and mm -hmm. work in that historic building. It's, uh, uh, it's a fabulous facility. It's a great uh, building. The, the League of Women Voters mm -hmm. uh, put on a wonderful tour three yes. or four or five times a day. And, uh, you know, just the history yeah, there. But, you know, we, we have some very dedicated people on both sides of the aisle, in right. the House and in the Senate. Uh, the committees are winding down. Right. Most, most of the bills are starting to be uh, moved to the floor of the sure. Senate or to the appropriations uh, right. building. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's a much more cordial atmosphere than I think people on Main Street think it may be. Exactly. You know, we, we hear a lot about uh, the political undertones and overtones, uh, but there's really a lot of good conversation. Exactly. Now, what committees are you on up at the Capitol? Well, I was, uh, I was assigned to the Appropriations Committee. Okay. That is the expenditure side of the budget. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, um, as you noted, I was first selectman in the town of East Lyme That's for right. seven years. That's right. And, you know, in, in small communities such as Westbrook and uh, other small towns mm -hmm. in East Lyme, you have a board of finance, yes. and the board of finance is the expenditure side, mm -hmm. but also the revenue side. Right. But in the state, uh, there's two committees. One handles the revenue in, yeah. and the other, the appropriations, handles the expenditures out. Right. So y you kind of don't know what's coming in, right. what's going out. So it's an interesting dynamic that I'm getting used to, uh, but I'm sure it will start to come together uh, over the next uh, three or four weeks as our budget has to be somewhat finalized put together okay sure. uh, by by april 30th that's soon huh well the the, the each committee mm -hmm. has what they call a a, a, a deadline yes a jf deadline which means joint favorable okay so if you got a minute i'll back sure, you up in the go process for it. You go get for a, it. we were installed on january 7th yes and by january 19th we had to put our ideas in the form of bills as individual legislators, mm -hmm. whether you're on the Senate or the House. Right. And you put those forward, and then they're distributed based on subject matter and type to the committee that would be appropriate okay. for them to hear them. And some get fallen off and, and don't get heard. Right. Uh, others get moved to other committees for, you know, that people think are more appropriate. And yet still others get talked about in that committee and become, uh, if if they're going to go forward, they have to become uh, a matter before a public hearing. Right, correct. And if, they're a, if they have a public hearing, and then the committee determines that it's time to uh, move that forward, and it moves out of the committee, it's called a joint favorable uh, opportunity. And the deadlines for most of the committees have passed. Okay. Appropriations and finance, some of the bigger expenditures and revenue ones are at the end of... Uh, uh, April, I think judiciary is one too. Okay. And so once that gets out, then the conversation begins in the House and the Senate on the floor, uh, and and the conversation turns to uh, votes and discussion and right. coming together. Now, like you said, you were first selectman for the town of East Lyme for 
Seven, seven years. years. Now, once you decided to go on to the venture that you're on now, how did they decide who replaced you? Well, I had um, five members to the Board of Selectmen plus myself. Uh, one of those members gets appointed by me okay. uh, or the first selectman right. to be deputy first selectman. Uh -huh. And the deputy first selectman acts in the first selectman's absence for vacations right. or illness or mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, so the deputy first selectman that I appointed five years ago was mm -hmm. a guy by the name of Mark Nickerson, who was a okay. businessman in, in town and family man. And, and uh, you know, he... Uh, was on zoning sure. for 10 years. I also served on zoning in East Lyme. And so I appointed Mark to be deputy, and he was the deputy for the last five years. And so when it came time for me to step down, and yeah. <coughs> excuse me, I had to step down because of the town charter. Okay. Now, Kathy Austin in Sprague, for example, is yep. the state senator of the 19th sure. district. Know that name. She runs the town of Sprague as first select woman and does the Senate duties, because Sprague does not have a charter that precludes her. For her. How exactly. she balances all that, one only knows. Exactly. But, but she's a very talented, uh, you know, senator and, and first select woman. So, exactly. so uh, I had to step down on January 7th when I swore in. When you got sworn and, in. And, and then the board of selectmen uh, appointed Mark because he was the most appropriate. He was the most right. uh, informed. He was the most experienced. and. He goes to the next election, which is November, and then the process starts over. He'll, uh -huh. he'll either have yeah. to run again and be chosen as a candidate, uh, or two other people, or three, or however many exactly. will, will run. Exactly. Now, as far as back to, we're going to go back up to Hartford. <coughs> what are some of the hot topics going on up at the up at the state senate this year for this legislative session? Well, certainly, uh, you know, we've just had a few sessions going forward, but I think in the building, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the big issue is the budget. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about uh, the budget that the governor has given us. Uh, mm -hmm. The budget was, you know, over the spending cap a little bit, uh, and, you know, there were some controversial cuts. Uh, the governor cut uh, or proposed, well, his budget actually cut many essential services uh, and many services that got a lot of people's attentions up there. So, uh, so there's been conversations on both sides of the aisle about mm -hmm. uh, another budget being being put together. And typically, what happens is the governor and his office puts the budget, they present it okay. uh, to the legislature, and then the legislature either works with that budget, doesn't do anything to the budget, or crafts an entirely new budget. Exactly. And this year, I think uh, they're crafting an entirely new budget. Um, there's also uh, tolls were a big conversation. Yeah. Uh, assisted suicide was a big conversation. Mm -hmm. um, the casino, ex I hate to say expansion because it's really not an expansion, but the casino uh, satellite facilities uh, has been a big topic of conversation. Okay. So there's been a few. How's the, well, obviously you've seen the budget for the state. How's it looking? Well, it's interesting. Um, we have, uh, you know, a number of constituencies in, in the state that it's kind of incumbent upon us, you know, to fund and make sure that they're taken care of, those who don't have the capability of taking care of themselves. And right. many of those dollars were stripped away from the budget. So it, in my view, I, I think a lot of that has to be put back. Mm -hmm. um, there are other agencies and departments that uh, are showing you know, pretty good size increases right. uh, in their budgets. And I think those need to be pared down. Uh, there are a lot of uh, over $900 million in, in t new taxes uh, in, in the budget uh, that the governor presented. So there's, you know, some discussion that has to happen with regard to that. Um, so we need to make, uh, you know, our state more business friendly. Uh, we need to we need to make our state, you know, uh, more comfortable to live in in mm -hmm. terms of keeping our young people here, okay. uh, not taxing pensions or retirement incomes to the extent that it drives our uh, experienced people out. Mm -hmm. uh, so so there's a lot of things that kind of work their way into and through the budget that uh, that needs to have conversation. Mm -hmm. One of the other questions I didn't ask during my monologue was, 
You, you're a state senator from the 20th district? 20th, yes. What towns do you cover? The 20th district encompasses mm -hmm. uh, a portion of Old Saybrook, yeah. Old Lyme, okay. East Lyme, Waterford, New London, a portion of Montville, and the towns of Basra and Salem. That's the 20th district. Pretty big district. Pretty, pretty big, yeah. Pretty big. And Well, you know, they break it up by population. Right, exactly. If you're a state rep, mm -hmm. uh, you're representing about 20... Three to 25,000 people or so. Right. If you're a state senator, mm -hmm. it's somewhere between 95 and 103 or exactly. something like that. And so they move it. So, you know, when you get closer to the bigger cities, the, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it's a little bit smaller as people are more condensed. But, you know, we live in, in southeastern Connecticut. It's a wonderful it is. place to live. It's, it is. it's a great place. You know, and I couldn't really be more honored to serve uh, the 20th district in this capacity after you know, my 23 years in East Lyme as an elected exactly. official. Now, is there a dip? Obviously, there's, there's a difference between putting a budget together as a first selectman and looking over the budget as a state senator that the governor's going to propose. How important is it that each, as a municipality, you working with your different towns that you cover as far as like outreach in the community <coughs> and budget money? that gets allocated to each town? Well, one of the, uh, you know, one of the things that I bring to the table mm -hmm. is that I've worked with a lot of the mayors and first selectmen in the 20th district during my time right. uh, as first selectman East Lyme. I was chairman of the Council of Governments, okay. uh, which is 21 towns now in southeastern Connecticut. So I have a, you know, I'm familiar with all of those right. guys. And, and uh, we have some great mayors and first selectmen uh, there. And so what I did was went and visited uh, each and every one of them during the campaign and, and some of them after, and tried to understand specifically what their needs were uh, and, you know, what they wanted to get out of Hartford in mm -hmm. this session. What are, you know, what are they trying to get? So, uh, and then being uh, a first selectman and having the opportunity to craft these budgets for East Lyme, right. you know, we had, you know, six budgets that were uh, balanced and with a surplus mm -hmm. at each year. So, you know, that's a good skill set uh, to bring to the Appropriations Committee uh, because it gives you just a little bit of a, an edge. But the Appropriations Committee in Hartford has um, 50 members on it. Wow. I mean, it's a, it's a very it's large a committee. committee. And, and so now where we have been is we're broken down into subcommittees. Mm -hmm. And we each have, you know, half a dozen or so agencies that we look at. Right. And do their budgets, the committees get together and uh, the chairs of those committees decide and then they bring it back up to the big, the bigger group. Yep. And I think uh, that's where we are now. So I'm not sure how that gets managed from that point, but the main chairs, Senator Bayh and Representative Walker have been very involved in the committee work that I've been doing. So it seems to me that they're involved uh, all the way through. So. Well, you know what? We'll talk about this more in the second segment. Would you mind sticking around? I would love to. Thank we'll be you right so back much after a short break. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming. Are we in trouble? No, you're not in trouble. I just uh, want to set some ground rules. Like, like what? Well, remember last week when you hit Vinny in the head with the shovel? <laughs> I do not recall that. <laughs> of course not. Well, it was pretty graphic. Too graphic for the kids. <laughs> so I'm going to have to block you. I, you know, I got to make this up to you. This is Vinny's watch, and I want you to have it. You deserve no, it. Thank you. That's really not necessary. No, no. Come here. It was not. It was like. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is trunk driving. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm your host, sitting here with Senator Paul Farmica. Senator, Sir, welcome back. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm great. Good, thanks for, thanks for sticking around. Well, and thank you for having me oh, here. Oh, not a problem. Hopefully we'll make this a reoccurring, reoccurring spot. Well, if you'll have me back, I'd be happy to come. Definitely, definitely. Now we were talking about the during the first segment, the budget and some of the top priorities up at the Capitol. 
And we talked about, let's talk about transportation for a little while as far as like tolls and the general overview of the transportation for the state. Where do you, where do you see it going and why? Well, the governor, is, as you know, and many of your uh, viewers know, mm -hmm. proposed a $100 billion transportation infrastructure upgrade over the next 30 years, mm -hmm. um, which I, I think everybody in the state realizes that probably has to happen. Right. Uh, but that's $3 billion a year, and it's kind of a difficult uh, you know, difficult environment where to and where to generate all that money. So, uh, so, you know, we have to work on our infrastructure. Not only do we have to work on transportation, but we mm -hmm. have to work on, you know, water and sewer and uh, and and you know our. Uh, but certainly, our highways are in need of it. The bridges are in need of it, uh, and we just have to balance what we are able to do uh, with what we can afford. And so that's that's kind of where we are now. Now, as far as the toll situation goes, how we want, the governor wants to put tolls back in the state of Connecticut to basically bring in revenue to the state. How do you think that's gonna work? Well, you know, with the argument for tolls would mm -hmm. be uh, since the time when we used to have tolls, right. they've evolved into a certainly more user-friendly uh, mechanism in, in that they're mostly electronic and, yep. and there are ways that they can capture your, you know, if you have an easy pass right. for your windshield or right. whether they capture your license plate, send you a bill. And send you a bill. Right? Uh, and there's conversation by those who think that tolls are a good idea is that there are a number of people that just kind of flow through the state of Connecticut, mm -hmm. use our roads and don't contribute. Right. Uh, you know, I, I would like to see us get, you know, our financial house in order first. Okay. Uh, I, I think a toll is yet another cost uh, to, to the residents that live here. Um, and, you know, we've had a fair amount of transportation dollars collected over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of that money has been diverted right. to the general fund, uh, you know, yeah. prior to this administration and prior to the administration before. It's been, uh, it's been a habit of the legislature to you know, to kind of do that. And, and we need to be more disciplined about, you know, where we spend our money. Exactly. Now let's talk about other senators that you serve up at the state, state Senate with. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, you, you, you campaign, and again, I was a business person in town and, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a local volunteer commissioner and then became first selectman. So you hear of what happens in Hartford, yep. you know, all this acrimony and... and uh, you know, and yet you get up there, and, and it seems to be a much different environment. Right. And you and I were talking before we began tonight uh, about a little bit of the differences up there. And this right. year, uh, there are 36 senators, as there Correct. are every year. Yeah. But this year, there are eight new senators. Okay. Now, I am the only uh, district that switched from one party to the other. Mm -hmm. But there are eight new people that have been elected uh, and started their term on January 7th. Right. Uh, and, you know, they're not kind of uh, tied into thinking of the past, and mm -hmm. they're, they're willing to bring new ideas, and so there's been a lot of wonderful conversation. Uh, you know, the, the, probably the most famous of the new senators is, is uh, our friend Senator Kennedy. Correct. Who is, uh, you know, a wonderful person. Uh, we've had some great conversations about uh, issues. He's a chair of the Environment Committee, does a does a nice job there. But there are many new. Senator Martin from Bristol. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's just a good group of folks that are interested. And so far, it's been, it's been you know, a very nice atmosphere. Uh, everybody's very cordial. Uh, but I imagine we'll get into the political uh, season, oh. you know, as we start <laughs> deciding on whether to pass bills or not. Exactly. Now, the, you, there's a new president, president of the Senate, Martin Looney. Looney, yes, long time, 34 years he's been in the Senate, I wow. think. Uh, so he's certainly paid his dues. Oh, he's, yeah. he's a very, very smart uh, man. He's the president pro tem of mm -hmm. the Senate yeah. uh, from the New Haven area. Yeah. And uh, uh, Bob Duff, who is the majority leader, okay. new majority leader. Uh, then you have uh, Senator Fasano, who's the minority leader. Yeah. And uh, uh, Themis Claritus, who sure. is the, the new minority leader in the House. So. What I find interesting about yeah. that is all four of those leaders, and I, I think you'd have to go back 
some way before you found this again, are all from contiguous towns around the New Haven area. Uh, they all, their districts kind wow. of touch or are included in that. So, wow. you know, I find it interesting. So they have, uh, um, uh, and I forgot to mention Speaker Sharkey, the Speaker yes. of the House. Uh, so they're, um, you know, they, they must have some level of familiarity and, and, and working relationship. And I think that's being played out now uh, in, in some of the cordial atmosphere mm -hmm. and the way things are happening. Because we're a little bit better, I guess, in terms of being on time and, and uh, finding out what's going on. So, so it's, an exciting, it's an exciting time. Good. Now, what people don't, well, obviously, you know it, and I know it from being up at the Capitol. What a beautiful building that is. Oh. I'm sure that there's, a build, that's a building that's rich in history in the state. Rich in history, you know, and I sit there and I'm in my, you know, in my Senate chair in the chamber and I just look around and you be, you know, you're just awestruck at, yeah. at the fact that you have the opportunity to, to work and serve in this capacity and you begin to think of, you know, all of the history, uh, the statues that are there mm -hmm. outside, yeah. the, the Senate chambers and the, and the hall of the House, the way they've redone it and made it look, uh, you know, much nicer and fresher and uh, you know, it's just a wonderful opportunity. And I, I would invite everybody up. You want to come up and see me? Uh, yeah. You know, SenatorFermica.com is, is my website. Right. You can go on that and listen, we'll have some tours. Come on up. And yeah. the League of Women Voters does a great tour okay. uh, up there. And, and it's, uh, in fact, I just took it the other day with some folks that, are, that came up. So Now, when, they, when, this, when the League does the tour, do they actually take you into the... Hall of the, the Senate chamber and they do when the Senate when the Senate or the Senate. House is not in session. Okay. So they start in the legislative office building yep. and they give you the history of how that was built, and then you walk through the underground tunnel there, which goes mm -hmm. under the sure. exit on 84 into the Capitol, and they bring you and talk to you about all the the statues that are there, the history of the building, and then you go up and you you get to see inside the House, and they talk yep. about that, and you get to see. Uh, inside the Senate chamber. Very and, uh, cool. Yeah, oh, it's very cool. And they're very knowledgeable. These tour guides, know, they know all kinds of things about that. Exactly. So I was happy to take it. There you go. And hopefully you'll take it again. I hope to take it again. You promised, you know, before we started, you're going to come up and visit. I would so, love to come up and visit. You know, we'll happily do it. I wonder if you could tape up there. I'm I don't know if you can. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah, I could. But, that would be... but we'll certainly have you up there. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, really, anybody who who really hasn't has not been up there uh, needs to get they need to come come up. on up in fact if you're from a town and you're listening and you're you're with a senior center or another group a boy scout troop you know let's arrange for a lot of people exactly at one time to come up and yeah. and uh, we'll do know, a group they, tour they have a great little ca uh, cafeteria and oh yeah it's, it's just a wonderful wonderful place that you know the uh, the library is right mm -hmm. nearby yeah. and the Supreme Court so you know it's a great opportunity to go up and I think people you know, I think we have to restore some pride in our state. You know, mm -hmm. there's been all this talk about, you know, tolls and budget, money and taxes and, you know, jobs. And, you know, we're, we're kind of tightening up our shoulders. We need to kind of, you know, re renew our sense of pride in the right. state and work hard together uh, to kind of pull us, pull us out of this. Now, let's, t let's talk a little bit about the... Again, again, with the, with the aspect of the budget that's going to go on and the tolls, and let's talk about property taxes and motor vehicle tax for a few minutes. And as, as far as the way that works, <coughs> okay. Well, property taxes are pretty much collected by the local cities and towns. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the state collects nope. any nope. property tax, but the effects that they have on cities and towns right. then cascade into whether. Uh, Cities and towns can maintain their operating budget based on the, the, the aid that they get. Uh, and so if they do, and if they're good uh, stewards of their dollars, mm -hmm. um, then property taxes remain low. Uh, there is a new initiative uh, that uh, Senator Looney and Duff were actually in New London the other day talking about their bill SB1. SB being, if you read that, it's Senate Bill yep. 1. If you see HB and Which then a House number... Bill. It's usually House Bill. Right. Um, but Senate Bill 1 would revisit how the pilot program works and how the car taxes work. And mm -hmm. when I say pilot, it means payment in lieu of 
taxes. Mm -hmm. And so this was a formula that was decided, you know, tens of years ago to compensate towns for properties that they were unable to collect tax on, but took up space in their, right. in their area. Right. Colleges, hospitals, uh, prisons, yep. uh, those kinds of things. So communities like East Lyme, for example, where we have uh, uh, two and a half prisons, kind of. We have a number yep. of state parks, Rocky sure. Neck State Park. Yep. We have two National Guard posts. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of uh, property there that uh, would otherwise be taxable if there were in public uh, uses, but uh, in private uses. But the public now, uh, through the state government, gets a payment in lieu of taxes based on the formula. So okay. uh, this SB1 would look to revisit that. Uh, it, would, it would kind of increase property taxes for commercial and industrial uh, properties and then take the difference of the appreciation over the next few years and send it uh, you know, throughout the state. Uh, that's one fairly uh, complex formula and okay. controversial formula. All right. And the other is uh, there's been talk many years about the car tax. Mm -hmm. And uh, the car tax, how I live in East Lyme, you imagine you live in Westbrook or Saybrook I somewhere. I live in Clinton, actually. Or you live in Clinton. So if you have a, a, a 1990 Toyota and I have a 1990 Toyota, mm -hmm. uh, they're both taxed at different rates right. based on the tax formula for each town. Mm -hmm. so, so there's been some talk of how you standardize that uh, and make it more of a fair tax. And one of the things that uh, is on the table this year is taking the car tax collectability yeah. away from towns and bringing it up to the state. So the car tax money is standardized. Right. It's given a one mill rate and then uh, collected the money up to the up to the state and then redistributed back to the town. So there's a lot of concern about that. I know in East Lyme, yeah. and I use that because I'm familiar with their budget, is a little over $2 million is collected uh, just in car taxes. So if that revenue went somewhere else and didn't come back in whole, that it would cause property taxes to increase uh, in the town of East Lyme because you couldn't weather that type of loss of revenue. So Exactly. Well, we're about to say goodnight. Before we do, I just want to thank you for coming on again. Hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, you, you know, you do a great job thank here. You. and it went by very quickly. Thank you. On behalf of Senator Paul Formica, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.